Okay, I'm going to quickly show you the new data visualizer templates within Visio, a feature within Visio Pro for Office 365. Within the flowcharts category now, we've got this basic flowchart data visualizer and cross-functional flowchart data visualizer. So if I click on one of those, we see we get prompted to go and get some data from somewhere because we want to create a diagram from you automatically. Let's have a quick look at what's in the Excel template that it's provided with us and we see that we've got the first tab is showing us a little bit of an overview of how it uh, all goes together and then we have a description of the, the process map that we've got to create. So these columns that are blue are going to be mandatory for creating a cross-functional flowchart. If we were just creating a normal flowchart, not cross-functional, then it wouldn't need the functional phase. And then we can have any number of these extra or optional columns at the end there, which is here just shown in, in green. So what we have within the template here is just an, an idea of how you could do this. So we've got uh, the blue columns and then we've got a whole load of green columns. So there's an example of what I want to do. Now I have actually created a flowchart using that. I won't bother saving that one. If I open up one I've prepared earlier here. Now this is the process that I'm actually going to be running through here. The process of creating this cross-functional flowchart from data automatically using Data Visualizer. So I have got a whole load of process steps here and I've got uh, these descriptions for each step and then you have these columns here which tell you where to connect to next. So in this case uh, the start is going to connect to the function or process open Visio and I've split them uh, by obviously particular shape types there and then by the function and the phase. So the function are the names of the swim lanes and the phases are, are the vertical separations that we have as we go across from left to right. And as you can see here, we've got the status of not started showing through here. And then over here, I've decided to bring through the alt description. So the alt description um, I've got here just as a formula. So you can do this from other parts of this table, uh, which is going to be the description that would be read out by the narrator for those who are hard of, well, visually impaired, basically, so they can listen to uh, the Windows system describing to them what each shape is about. So that's going to go through there automatically. And the status one here, data, is actually coming from this status worksheet there. So I just wanted to show that you can bring through data in that way. So that's the data that I'm going to use. I'll just close that down. Do I want to save it? Uh, okay. So uh, as I'm going through this wizard now, I'm going to use that data to create myself a flowchart. So it's going to be a horizontal one I'm going to have, not a basic flowchart, not vertical. It's going to go from that particular uh, workbook that we've got there, and then it's going to choose the range. Uh, so if you remember, I created that second range there, which was for the statuses. So I don't need that one. I want to go straight to the process map data, and that's where all that uh, data is in there. Okay, so it now it's read that, and it's seen that the, the columns that I've got are the ones that I showed you within the workbook. So which one is the function or swim lane title? It's the function one. Which one is the phase or, or the timeline? That is the, the phase. Of course, it shows you here you could use different names, but that's up to you. Okay, now how do you want it data to be organized or ordered? I actually gonna, am going to go from uh, the functions, going to go from the top to the bottom, uh, being in the or same order as I've entered them in the workbook. And the phase or timeline is going to go from left to right using the order again that's from top to bottom in the workbook. Let's go on to next here. So uh, the, the unique identifier for each row is the step ID. A description, yes, I've got that in and the type of shape that you want to drop. Okay, where would it get that information from? We get it from the shape type one. And for accessibility, I'm gonna use that alt description. Okay, so I've just mapped it against that, not any of the other ones, that one there. Okay, then I'm gonna go on to the next part of the wizard. And here it's read that information that was in that shape type column. And it's saying, okay, you've got that uh, text, if you like, within that column. Now, which of the shapes that are on the stencil do you want it to use when it sees that text? So start and end uh, process is going to be process. So these are just what's available on that basic flowchart shapes stencil. Of course, I could have looked on any other stencil that I had open, which is 
what we're going to do in a later video. But for now, we're mapping against the default one that comes within the Visio uh, flowchart templates. Then how do we want to connect one shape to another? Well, we're going to, well, there are connections, first of all. So there is a column in there which is telling us how that connection should be done. And that column is called, in my case, the next step ID. And it's identifying that it is going forward, not backwards, if you like, to the previous step. And the information that's in there, those step IDs, are separated by a comma. And there is another column there where I've got the label in there. So when I've got a decision, for example, I'm going to go yes, no, or no, yes, depending which way it's going to go. And when I do finish, it's now going to create me a diagram by reading that table. And automatically, it's going to lay this out nicely, as you can see here. Well, first thing I'm going to do is what I normally do is go to the view and switch off the ruler. Guy in the that makes it look a bit prettier. Now, if I zoom in on one of these, and let's uh, hide all the shapes over there. And we can see that it's not doing a bad job. Uh, it's at least, well, normally you go for the 80 20 rule, but I think this is more than 80. Here, for example, it didn't know which, how I wanted to break up visually the yes no branches. Let's just go and click on, uh, I see, look, that one comes from there. So I'm just going to move the start of that connector to there and it automatically relocates. I could leave this because it's quite clear, but I like to have it nicely split in like so. Over here, I've got a bit of ambiguity because I've got an arrow coming down here. And I'm not quite sure where it's coming from. Is it coming from here? Well, there is one, and there must be one coming from the back there. So what I'm going to do now is to create, change this connection from there to there, and we can see that it's now looking sensible. And again, I'll go across here, and oh, uh, what, what have I got there? Oh, it's only, it's only because of the positions, not quite as it should be. So that should be probably over here because I've got this loop out here, and then it comes back in again and goes around there. How about over here? Okay, a little bit unclear again. So this starts and it ends up there at the same place as that one's going out. So I just move it like so. And I go through my diagram like this and I um, visually clean up to make it a little bit clearer for the understanding. And let's see, let's go over here. And that's looking clear enough to me. Come over here, mm, finish, 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 I think. I would probably move my finish over here. Uh, still not quite clear there. Is it just because I'm not moved like, like that? Uh, maybe this wants to split. And so we can see that it's doing this and I maybe I'd line that up with that, like so. So I've now got something which is clearly, ah, oh, I said almost, 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 almost. So I'll just move that one over there and put that like this. I could leave it or I move like that. Now I've got my cross-functional flow chart drawn almost perfectly from the data some slight adjustments and I think that is much clearer and much quicker obviously than doing that visually it also it has served as a way of uh, visually checking that the data I've got in my table is correct so there you go of course I could now go on and update the data in that workbook which I'm not going to just now I'm just going to show you you can select the heading and you go to the data tab and when the workbook has been updated uh, you can then press refresh and what will happen is that let's have a look at one of these shapes and look at the shape data on those uh, it's just going to have a look at the uh, view and then task panes shape data we can see that data has come through from each of those right and uh, what will happen is that when the information is updated in the workbook, it will come through and update that in there. Thank you very much.